Fantastic. So today, today we're going to read a little bit about plastic. Um, and I thought this was an interesting article actually on plastic. There were lots of things here in this article that I didn't know. <laughs> so I don't know whether it'll be the same for everybody else or, or maybe you've all heard some of these um, stories before. Hi, Constantine. Um, Hello, everyone. Excuse me for interrupting. No, Good. no problem. Um, but the the article is kind of looking at the way that um, maybe the purpose or the way we think about plastic has kind of changed um, because originally plastic was actually developed to help the environment. And I think we all know that today plastic is kind of considered something that's really negative for the environment. So I thought this article was interesting because it kind of explains to us how this change happened. You know, why we first started using plastic, why maybe it was actually helpful, and then what happened to kind of change it into this, you know, negative, bad, evil thing <laughs> we have today. <laughs> so hopefully it'll be interesting. Um, it's a bit long, the article. So I don't know whether we'll be able to read it all today. But let's see how much of it we can read. Some of it's a bit scientific as well. But let's see how much we can um, we can get through today. And hopefully we can have an interesting conversation about it on Thursday as well. Yeah, this is a little bit of a spoiler for the article. <laughs> it was kind of saying that not all plastic is negative. You know, some plastic is actually good. It's just maybe certain types of plastic that aren't so good. So, but I won't say anything else. Let's let's discover it as we go. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to give too much information now, or we won't have any any reason to read the article. <laughs> so let's start reading. Let's see who's up first. Manu, would you like to start today? Uh, yes, thank you, Natasha. Uh, the the downsides of a, a, a wipe clean world. Um, when it first emerged in design, plastic embodied progress, glamour, and convenience. But at ask uh, cat pound and uh, what's next? It is impossible to underestimate the enormous impact that plastic has had on our daily lives over the past century or so. The expansion of global communication, the electrific electrification of our homes and space exploration would have all been unthinkable without it. The streamlined aesthetic of the 1930s and the futuristic shapes of the 60s would have taken very different forms. Uh, yet a product once associated with progress and revolutionary design potential is now considered toxic, uh, polluting our, our oceans and causing untold damage to marine and human health. In the exhibition Plastic Remaking Our World, the Vitro Design Museum explores how plastic became so omnipresent and encourages us to think about more considerate production and use. Uh, the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam is also addressing the issue in its our fucking backyard, which looks at the products already on the market, as well as experimental works. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's have a look at this uh, section here. You were taken a bit surprised by that word, Manu. <laughs> I don't think you expected to see that written there in the middle there, right? Especially not talking about plastic. <laughs> Yeah, no, no problem. It's written there, so you're allowed to say it, no problem. <laughs> One way that you can say it, though, um, so you know if you don't want to say the full word, sometimes we do want to say it, um, but we also just say effing as well. So kind of like this, I guess, if you think about it. So that's another way that you can say it without necessarily saying it sometimes <laughs> to give you another option. <laughs> okay. Um, let's have a look at the vocabulary here. Okay, it looks like we've got a question about streamlined. What does it mean if something is streamlined? Here they said, where was it? The streamlined aesthetic. Uh, 
Any idea what a streamlined aesthetic might be? Okay. Um, interesting answers here, actually. It would probably be the opposite of pointed, actually, Nina. Maybe the idea of something that continues, but really when something is streamlined, it's the idea that um, it doesn't have a lot of resistance, like to air or to water. Um, or something that's kind of made smooth so that it, um, it can be kind of easier or simpler in some kind of way. So I think when we're thinking about an aesthetic um, and kind of design, we have to think about something that's very smooth, something that's very sleek. So it's not something that has a lot of like corners and edges and things like this. It's something that's more like rounded curves, um, things like that. So let's see if we can find um, maybe a, a picture here. Um, to make it a little bit clearer. Okay, I think this is a good one actually. Let me show you this picture here. Hopefully this works. Okay, so if you have a look in this picture, can you see how there's like a lot of rounded shapes here? You know, instead of having like a square tear, a square chairs, square sofa, everything is kind of like curved, a lot of rounded, um, a land of round, rounded corners. It isn't a noun here, it's, a, it's an adjective because it's describing the type of aesthetic. So in this text, it's being used as an, as an adjective. You can't actually use streamlined as a, as a noun. You can only use it as a adjective or as a verb. We can also talk about streamlining, streamlining something, for example, like a process. But I think this picture is a good example because, you know, even the table, it's not a square or a rectangle, right? It has these curved edges. Even in the windows, you can see it still has these curved shapes. So this is the idea of streamlined. Um, it doesn't have like these sharp edges. There's a lot of like curves so that there's no, um, you can imagine like the air kind of passing over it. Is that clear for everyone? Yeah, and in generally it's that idea it's designed in a more efficient way. Yep. And that's why we can use it for other things as well. We can use it for processes and procedures and things like this. Okay. What about the rest of this section? Are there any um, other questions here? Uh, Nina, are these questions or comments? <laughs> Just to make sure. Uh, I think it's a comment about streamlined, right? Efficient and economic. Okay. Yes. In a lot of times, especially when we're talking about processes, we are talking about making them more economic. Okay. Are there any other questions in this part? Okay. Let's keep reading then. Let's see who's up next. Constantine, would you like to read? Oh, yes, sure. It's so unexpected. I am so surprised. 
<clears throat> so take me a few seconds. Uh, this top, uh, I, I should start from given the impact, yes? Yes, that's it. Given the impact of plastic on the current global climate crisis, it may come as a surprise that its earliest forms were actually created in order to protect nature. They were all to be substitutes for natural materials that had become become either scarce and or expensive or the har harvesting or extraction of which really posed a threat to nature it explains uh, Yo Yoshin Eisenbrand chief curator at the Vitra Design Museum Celluloid, for example, was initially invented as an alternative to ivory, which was in high demand for billiard balls during the 19th century. The fact that what the fact that it was also remarkably flexible and transparent, uh, then produced in thin stripes meant what in it went on to radically impact the photographic industry leading to the development of photographic film and ultimately motion pictures thank you thank you okay let's take a look at this part questions comments Okay, billiard balls. What are billiard balls? They're a bit hard to describe, aren't they? <laughs> you can maybe know what they are. I was just thinking, it's very easy to... Uh, don't think you would normally find them in a casino, no. I would expect to see them more in a bar. Balls to throw on a table as an indoor game. Yes, <laughs> that's probably actually a good description for the Manu. It's pretty difficult to describe them. So billiards is a kind of game um, where you have like the, you have a special table and the, all these different balls and the idea is to kind of get the, uh, hit them with a stick See, this game sounds really silly when you try to explain it. <laughs> Hit them with the stick and try to get them to, to go into different pockets that they have around the table. Um, this is why I posted the picture, because I figured it would be a lot more helpful than me trying to explain it. <laughs> so billiard balls would be these kinds of, of balls here. And, yeah, the table is covered with a type of carpet, exactly, um, so that it to make it kind of smoother for them to roll across. And obviously there's a lot of rules about how you play it, but is everybody familiar with this game? Sometimes we call it different names as well. Sometimes it's called billiards. Sometimes it's called pool. Um, I think there's another word we use in English as well that I don't remember now. But billiards and pool are the two most common terms we use for this game. Okay, great. Are there any other questions in this part?
Yeah, and there are different versions of the game as well. Oh, you must have been playing it a lot, Constantine. <laughs> or maybe not playing very well. <laughs> Any other questions here before we keep going? <laughs> the second option. <laughs> okay. Artem, Constantine, any other questions? Okay, let's keep reading then. Uh, Artem, would you like to read? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let me uh, feature in films and on the covers of numerous uh, magazines. Uh, historical uh, Paolo Chair became one of the most iconic designs of the 1960s. Backlight uh, was uh, backlight was the first truly synthetic material material invented to in uh, ninety seven uh, 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 by Leo Bakeland. And one of the reasons it became uh, uh, it uh, so popular so quickly uh, was it, uh, its electrical uh, insulating property. Uh, Asian brand tells PPC culture. And in the 1920s uh, was the beginning of the electrification of households. And that would have been a uh, central world without a uh, federal cheap industrial material uh, that could, uh, could be used for light switches, circuits, uh, and of course the really electric appliances that appeared, uh, such as radios, phones, and loudspeakers. Uh, this early prosecutor was very much a uh, demand driven one. However, as the understanding of polymer science explained in the 1920s and 30s, uh, uh, chemists at major petrochemical companies began to create new materials from uh, products simply because they could lead into the appearance of substances uh, such as polystyrene, uh, polyvinyl, nylon, and teflon. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Great. Let's have a look at this part here. Questions, comments? Plastic made of oil. Exactly. I was trying to think of how these, um, how this material looks like. I'm wondering if it's those old, I wonder if it'll help us here giving us a picture. Um, I don't think it will, no. Okay, um, so the pronunciation of these words here, we've got polystyrene, polyvinyl, nylon, and Teflon. Um, so, We've got some similarities here with the pronunciation of these actually. But polystyrene, polyvinyl, nylon, and Teflon. Yeah, see Constantine, this is why we call it PVC. <laughs> because trying to say polyvinyl chlorolite chlorolide is very difficult. PVC is much easier. <laughs> as I just proved. <laughs> ah, it's polychloride. Okay, you're at polyvinyl chloride. That, that's a little bit easier. <laughs> okay, what about the rest of this section? Are there any other questions here? Yeah. 
Yeah, nylon is used for lots of things. Nylon is used pretty commonly for cords, for all sorts of cords, actually. Um, if you have a look at, if you just search for nylon, for example, you'll see it used a lot um, just as like threads for different things. Um, a lot of clothes even we use, we, we make from nylon. This is the thing, I think we've got so many different um, words for different types of plastics that sometimes we forget that some things are actually plastic. See, <laughs> we've got four different things now, charging cables, clothes, parachute fabric, and fishing line. <laughs> Nylon's pretty, pretty um, versatile really. Okay, any other questions here before we keep reading? Okay, let's keep reading then. Nina, would you like to read? Yes, thank you, Natasha. Uh, the 